This is how to get in the diagnostic menu of your heat pump water heater. First press energy mode, then you press enter. Scroll down to diagnostic menu. Then you scroll down and you can choose your component status, fault count, whatever you want. You can clear them. But at this point, since I already typed the password in and it has to time out on the timeout circuit, the password would be filter, lock control, and vacation or away. That's the, the three buttons you have to press. Because once you press those three buttons, then you can go to the component status, and you can actually press enter again and actually see what the actual temperature is inside the tank. Uh, it's not going to be exactly 120. It's got a little range because obviously if it's 100, it has to keep it 120. This thing would be kicking on every three or four minutes to keep it exactly 120. So it's got a little range. Just like your thermostat inside your house, the AC kicks on and it drops inside the house a few degrees or even one degree lower. It all depends on how it's set up. But it tells you the the raw input, how many ohms. It's measuring the ohms on the compressor, making sure everything is good. It's also measuring the ohms on the, the temperature sensor, making sure that it's it's properly functioning. And the ohm count is actually um, conversion over. Right here, this ohm is the number that it's actually inputting into the computer, which then converts it over to uh, Fahrenheit. So really, that's just a more accurate number or more precise number like metric versus English. That's if you want to think of it that way. If you scroll down, it tells you all the other sensors that are inside the unit. Um, I have no clue where the T3, T3A sensor is. I imagine if one of these are the input and one of these are the, X, the, the um, output uh, of your water either leaving or exiting the tank, let me say, or entering the tank, what I meant to say. So when it knows when to kick on the compressor for high demand. Uh, currently, it's, it's on only e-heat mode. Um, it provides more than plenty hot water for two people, plus um, doing wash, a couple loads of laundry, and run a dishwasher. And I still have more than plenty of plenty of water in the end of the scope. Um, I figured this thing would have to be put into hybrid because sometimes I have a high demand, but Having four people inside the home, along with doing multiple loads of laundry and dishes, uh, it holds up fantastically. Um, let's just scroll up here more. We show you more of the sensors. It's another sensor. I have no clue where it's located, but it's it's somewhere. It it, it just measures <laughs> for something, but obviously it's not anywhere near um, the hot water. So I imagine these are on the top of the tank. Um, and another sensor. Um, you can toggle the the upper element to turn on and off. Um, that is for pretty much for technicians, but I mean, if you're ingenuitive and you don't want to have to pay for somebody to come out and see if the element's actually bad, uh, you can actually toggle it on and then actually measure the how much um, if there's any voltage going to it. If there's voltage going to it, then you know your control board is actually functioning cor correctly. Uh, this is all just information that would be useful if you don't have an extended warranty on the unit and you want to avoid having to pay labor charges. So they would just send you out the part and you just replace them yourself. Um, it tells you what has to be full. You can key on the compressor. I'm going to press enter. And then you can hear the compressor kick on. Um, you don't hear the fan because this is a, a test. Um, you don't want to run the compressor very long this way. Um, one or two minutes would be fine. Anything beyond that, your head pressure would get too high on the on the high side and cause uh, permanent damage to the unit. Uh, so let's not do that. Uh, you can toggle the fans on and off. Uh, this one is, I think, the left fan, which is fan one. Uh, it's to the left of the control panel, which would be all where the buttons are. Uh, toggle it. I should turn it on. Um, hmm. There it goes. Some reason it wasn't registering. Uh, that's fan one. 
can turn it off. Uh, you can't actually uh, toggle the actual RPMs on the fan. You can just view them. You can't actually adjust it. So really this is the only way uh, the fan controller is working on and off. And if your little diode on the fan motor is actually measuring the, the RPMs. So uh, let's go and do the doing that crap again. Oh well. <laughs> ah, it did slow. Okay, fan one's on. Then I'm gonna give it a second, then fan two should actually turn on. There it goes. I was just a little impatient. Anyways, that's your diagnostic menu for the fans. Uh, you, you can get more uh, more, it's got the fault code status, tells you the run condition A, B, C, and D. Um, I haven't really looked at these, why is it there? Other people can comment and actually label what each, uh, what each condition is. Um, I imagine it's probably one for a filter dryer, one's for a uh, evaporator coil, another's for the high pressure switch, another is for overcharge, undercharge. These are all Merely guesses, so it would be probably reasons to be in there. Uh, and even shows your fan and compressor, an upper element and lower element and dirty filter. So I mean, it, it, it's pretty. It's like a little small computer around here. I mean, you even got a little stuck key, kind of like if you ever leave your something on your keyboard of your of your um, computer, it starts beeping the hell. This will just ignore the, the stuck key and actually let you continue to use the device without being uh, unfunctional. Uh, you can exit out of that and actually you can clear them all. Uh, detection off. Um, I have not been able to get into this actually. Um, I think detection off is mean do I want to turn off the detection of anything that's wrong with the unit? Or it could be vice versa that it is actually detecting, a, it's not detecting anything. Uh, so it's not going to detect to see if there's anything wrong with the unit. Um, people can comment, see what what is said, uh, and post a couple of comments, please, if you have any information about this particular menu screen. Um, be helpful. Uh, for, I even tried the the universal um, password filter. Oh, I'm sorry, enter filter lock vacation, and it doesn't do anything. If I press another third key, it said it's uh, access denied. So obviously it's a four four digit key. Um, I even tried filter lock, vacation, and enter. Um, it's something. So maybe somebody knows that, that password. At the moment I'm not going to mess with it. Um, but for the people that didn't know how to get into the diagnostic mode, to, to view the fault and see what actually the, Every really component status is on the unit. If they're really that curious, they can. This is how to do it. Uh, again, the password is filter, lock, vacation. Uh, to get into this, you can just back out by in the back menu. These little key, this little dial right here, these little four little LED lights, is actually telling you which um, button you actually can press and actually will function. Um, again, to get into the diagnostic menu, press menu, energy menu. And press enter. Then you scroll down to diagnostic menu. Press enter again. At this point, uh, you would hit uh, any of these view fault or component status, and you would type your your password in the very first time. And then it lets you go in there and play with things. Um, don't mess with the settings on here. Uh, it's too high tech. I mean, honestly, there's a reason why these things are set up this way. Uh, you don't want to have a thousand dollar brick inside your house. So don't tell GE that you did this because this will void your warranty. But since I didn't do anything to the unit, there's no harm, no foul, nothing's done. And it's going to back out. And there you go. The GE water heater.